Well, welcome to another edition of AP's Profiles in Christian Living. My name is Mark Powell, and my special guest with me today is, well, in my opinion, one of the Tasmania's leading artists, Richard Stanley. Richard, welcome. It's great to have you with us. Thanks, Mark. Good to be here. Now, Richard, this is AP's Profiles in Christian Living. We'll get to your art in just a moment, but I'd like to start with your faith. How did you first become a believer in Jesus? Well, it was a bit of a story. Um, I've got three older brothers. I'm the youngest of the four, and um, my the brother after me, Robert, he's an artist and 10 years older than me. He went to Western Australia. I was brought up in Victoria in Geelong and uh, he went over to Western Australia and he kept sending me letters saying, you should come over here. It's a great place. I wasn't a Christian at the time. Mm. And um, when I went over there, he was having Bible studies and I used to, um, I didn't want to know about the Bible. I was only 22, you know, but I used to listen in the door at the studies and the Things are talking about, that's, that's talking about me, you know. But we go to open the door, oh, no, I'm not listening, I walk away. <laughs> and um, sure enough, he said, take this Bible, what harm can it do? Have a read of this Bible. So I went away up into the bush with, with a metal detector looking for gold <laughs> and uh, just on my own out in the middle of nowhere, pitched the tent, had me a detector, I'd go out every morning you know, bottle tops, cans, I'd spend hours. And at night I'd come by candlelight and I'd read this Bible. I thought, whoa, that's pretty amazing. And put it down again. Next day I'd go bottles and cans again. And every day it was less and less time prospecting and more and more time reading. Then about the third day I had an epiphany and I just fell down on my knees and started bawling. Um, I realised who Jesus was. So I went straight back to Perth. Told my brother I want to get baptised, and that's where it all started. So you, actually, you did find gold. <laughs> I, well, that's that was the other part of the story. I went looking for gold, but I found the real gold. That's what yeah. I meant to say. Yeah. Can I ask just to drill down on that a bit? What was it about Jesus uh, and the Bible that really in- convicted you or struck you? Just all the all the questions I had about life, the, the silly life we're all living, and. This just, the truth just hit me like, oh, I've got the answer. I know why this is all happening now. Mm. We're only passing through. We're not meant to be here forever, you know. We're going somewhere else. Mm. And just just the words of Jesus just got me in the heart. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so that was when you were 22. Um, you're now a fair bit older than that. Just right? a tad. Yeah, just a tad. Um, how did you get into art? Well, again, my brother Rob. He was a, he's an incredible artist, but he's a surrealist, so very unusual, like Salvador Dali sort of stuff, mm. bent, bent arms. and So um, he's got a gallery in Western Australia. But when I was a little kid, I'd do drawings and he'd say, that's really good, keep it going, you know, as I was growing up. He was always encouraging me, mm. whereas it, usually it gets to a time you go to school and put that art away, get a real job, you know, study this and that. But he kept it up. So right through school I got top marks for art. I thought oh, I should do something with this and, um, yeah, I just kept painting and started selling work and I thought, oh, I'm onto something here and I've been doing it ever since, so, you know, 30 or 40 years, yeah. Now, I, when I looked at, I was on holidays up at Bishino recently and I was staying in this lady's house and she had a number of your prints all around the house and I was immediately struck, not just by your style but the beauty of it and in particular the light, which is I, I can't explain it to somebody that hasn't been to Tasmania before, but the light down here is unique and you have captured it in a way that I haven't seen in other artists. Can you explain um, w- how you do that and, and why that's a particular focus for you? I think it's because I really, as you see in this picture, I love right. I love tone. Mm. I love that blend going down to change colour but with no lines. So that's, I always start with the sky and the water. That's why I'm, I've, my work's set as very calming work because I like reflection and you can't get that with a rough sea or, you know, like storms. So I tend to do a lot of calming type paintings. Mm. But because of that tone, which is my strength, I think, that's what I'm known for. Mm. So that's why you like the light because you do get a lot of nice light and colour. Yeah, and I've also heard you talk about, now this is a little bit more technical, about composition and how important composition is in artwork. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah. Composition is the shapes you put in there. Like 
if you have, you're going to put three trees in a landscape, you don't put three trees all the same size. Much more interesting, you have a big tree, a medium and a small, and mix them around. Straight away you get depth. So whatever's up closer is bigger and what's further away is smaller. And same with the light. Closer is darker, further back is light. So all these, is lighter. So all these things give you that depth, you get depth of field. There, there was, there's so many questions I want to ask you. That's great. <laughs> right. Because, okay, you start selling art as a young man and you think, oh, I can make a living out of this. But now you live in a small town called Signet down, you know, south of Hobart. Tell us how did that come about and well, what your life looks like now? Well, before we came here, um, when I went over to WA, I lived with my brother for a while. Mm. I ended up working in the mines in Pilbara, an iron ore mines. So I was on shift work 12 hours a day and then at night or my days off, I'd paint pictures of local scenes and the miners would buy them, just little ones. Mm. And uh, I was just doing it as a hobby thing. So um, that's where I really got realised I can make some money out of this. Mm. So as far as Signet goes, like I was over there for 15 years, WA. Mm. I worked as a builder. I built my own house at 23 down in, in Denmark, down the bottom. Right. Right down the bottom of WA near yeah. Albany. Mm. And um, the local builder was so impressed that I had a crack. He gave me a full-time job at the hardware. And he said, um, I'll pay you for all your materials if you work for me. So I got to build this house quite cheaply. And, um, yeah, then I moved to Perth. Because I was single and, you know, the bright lights. I was young. I wanted to find out what was going on up there. I uh, met my wife and wasn't my wife at the time, but um, a few years later we married. Came over here for a holiday to Tassie just for a look because we were sick of the hot weather in WA and we wanted to change. And um, went all around Tassie looking for somewhere we could run a business from a main street. And the last one we found was this old shop in Signet on the main street and the real estate, oh, I've got this old shop down in Signet. Did you want to have a look at that? Yeah. So it was pretty run down. It was quite cheap. Actually, it's the original corner the, shop, isn't it? The original general store from yeah. 1905. Mm. Yeah. And um, as soon as I walked in, there's big high ceilings, oh, yeah. magnificent all timber, a little bit wonky here and there, but that's all its character. Mm. And I straight away I thought, wow, gallery, bang. Mm. So what do you reckon, Jen? We, we, we said, Let's have a look at the house first. So, mm. Just behind the gallery is just a lean-to mm. and the, the, the floor was angled, you know, the fridge is like this. It was just a built-in veranda basically. Mm. She goes, well, we're only moving if you build me a house. <laughs> I said, rightio. So we knocked all the back off and built a, a two-storey home and raised four kids and they're all married and we're on our own now. Wow. 20, so, 25 years later. Wow. And um, I've run the gallery ever since. Yeah, at Stanley's Gallery. Stanley's Insignet, yeah. Insignet. Um, I've got to ask you, because it seems to me a juxtaposition, building and art, practical, artistic. But I've, I've known a lot of people that are very artistic and are builders. How do you think those two things go together? Well, I never thought of that. Creating something, I guess. Mm. Creating something from nothing. That's one of the things I love. Mm. I see an image and I can take it right through. I can take the photo. I can do the painting. Mm. I can turn it into a print. I can make cards. Like it all comes from nothing. You create value. Same mm. with a house. It's just a flat bit of dirt and you create something mm. that's valuable. So every artist has a muse, right, has, an, has something that inspires them, right, and that for some it's, it's the nude, you know, for others it's, oh, I don't know, landscape. You know, what is it that inspires you that, you know, keeps you thinking, I must put that onto paper, I must put that onto canvas? There's a few things. Mm -hmm. It's actually the creation which really mm -hmm. inspires me. When I look at that view, yeah. I think, oh, I've got to paint that. I've got to capture that moment, you know. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is just, um, yeah, God's word, the Psalms, just, you know, look around. You know, I love Romans 1 verse 20. Man is without excuse after seeing what's been made. Yeah. You know, how can you say there's no God when you look out the window and have a look at creation, you know? Yeah. Only a fool says in his heart there is no God. Mm. So that sort of inspires me. Yeah. Just what I see around me. Mm. And um, just when I do one, and it, oh, I'm thinking, gee, that looks pretty good, you know. <laughs> so that inspires me to do the next. And people 
because I've got a gallery, I get so much positive feedback like you, you know. Mm. You, you fill me full of so much encouragement. I just want to do another one. <laughs> yeah. So actually it's that interplay with the public, let's call it. Yeah. That it's not just for you the art as abstract ideas but it's the relationship with people. Sure. Because I was in your gallery the other day and I must say I've never bought art, original art in my life and much to my wife's shock I came home with a <laughs> with an original and uh, she was shocked and I said, but I just, there was something in me that I thought, uh, like, uh, we were over at Bruny Island and you did this um, triptych. Which is where this one is. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you did this incredible, which this is beautiful too, but you did this incredible triptych looking back from the lighthouse, which is quite iconic here in Tassie, particularly at Bruny Island, one of the oldest running lighthouses in Australia. But the view back across the bay um, was just stunning. And when I came to your studio, it was really interesting. You, there was another picture that you had and because you do commissions. Yeah. And um, you want to just tell us about the story of the guy um, that was walking his dog and came oh, up yeah, to you yeah. and asked you about doing a commission? Yeah, yeah. I, I, Verona Sands, I don't know if you know that, it was down right down the bottom of the um, Huon Valley. Mm. And, yeah, I was doing a big oil of um, looking over Adamson's Peak at Verona Sands mm. and it was three quarters finished and this guy came into the gallery and he says, gee, oh, I love that. He said, if you put me in there with my dog, I'll bite off you. <laughs> <laughs> all righty So I took him down to the beach and I got him to walk back and forward in front of me while I got all the shots because you've got to get the shape right. It's got to look like him. Yeah. That's one thing. I Don't just make it up. I've got to see the scene yeah. to make it happen. I want it to look real, you know. Mm. So, um, yeah, and he loved it. And funny thing was he had a bit of a paunch and he, he kept saying, he come and he says, oh, could you make me a bit slimmer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So it kept coming up. I said, look, if I take any more off, it won't be you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right here, okay. And, look, you have to be honest as a Christian artist as well. Yeah. You, know, you have to you display truth. It was one reason I don't do portraits, you know, because people want to look like, um, some gorgeous thing when they're not, you know. Yeah. Take the double chin off and get yeah. rid of my wrinkles and I'm not doing portraits. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've never done that sort of work? Maybe once or twice. But, mm. but I suppose you could, you could do it now because um, some of the archibalds and that are pretty pretty in your face, Okay, so, so I want to ask you about that. Now, this is a little bit more controversial, right, because it seems to me that our society has gone to a – a postmodern deconstructionism where there is no absolute truth, everything's up for grabs, and that's reflected in our art. Um, whereas, like a Christian artist like yourself, who believes in transcendent truth, believes in a creator God who creates the God with order and purpose, um, it's reflected in your art. Um, what do you think of modern art and what it's trying to what it's trying to do? I don't mind modern art, abstract, like if it's lots of beautiful colour. Mm. I don't like shock or like a lot of the Mona stuff's terrible, you know. Like I was really disappointed. I love the building but some of the oh, art. the building's incredible. I don't like the shock value. It's mm. not beauty. It's like why would you hang that on your wall, come home and go, oh, you mm. know, like I want people to come home and relax in front of my work and mm. feel, you know, calm. Mm. I've actually got a guy that collects my work who's not a well man and he said it makes him feel better every day. Mm. And I thought that gives me purpose as well, you know. See, that's interesting because I think the reason why I personally bought the artwork of Bruni Island was because I thought to myself, I so love Bruni Island. I would love to go there every week. But with your artwork on the you wall. You can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm actually looking in a window and I'm actually at Bruni again. Well, you actually got... One that's quite unique, which I haven't done before, which is a triptych, mm. which is three paintings together, mm. separated, and I painted around the edge. So when you look from the side, yeah. it's three dimensional. Yeah. So I'm glad you grabbed that one, Mark. I am too. <laughs> I am too, Richard. Um, I, in fact, a, a confession time, I thought to myself, uh, and I don't know if this is greed or what, um, make of it what you will. Uh, I just thought I would, I would lament the day that I thought, that that painting would belong to someone else because I thought I, you've so captured that scene and that beauty, and I don't know there is something about it as as being made in the image of God. When you look out at His creation, 
there are certain scenes and places and times in those places where it's like you commune with God, you know, um, through the beauty of his creation, you're overwhelmed with that. Is that the sort of feeling you have, um, you, you know, I would imagine regularly as you look at scenes and that inspire you to paint them? Just before I answer that, mm. I want to go back a bit. When you when you were looking at getting that painting mm. and you, we were talking on doing um, messages mm. and I told you I'm having a show in Victoria at the end of the month because you were going to come down and have a look at the mm. painting and consider mm. it. And as soon as I told you that, bang, you'd made the sale. I know, Pinger I know. goes, oh, he bought it. <laughs> I know. Don't that. say too much because my wife will be listening to oh, this. Okay. okay. <laughs> Is she not happy? Well, she's happy now. <laughs> <All right. laughs> now that she's seen it and she loves your work. But, again, it's just the fact that I've never bought original yeah. artwork before. Might be the beginning of something. And But I said to her, I tried to economically justify this, by saying that, you know, I don't think you ever lose on buying original artwork. No. If the artist is good, it's actually there's a sense of pragmatic financial investment in this that it never loses its value. It uh, So part of me... Well, it's been going up for many years, so hopefully it's a good investment for you. Yeah, let's just keep that trend going, Richard, <laughs> okay? <laughs> no, um, but there is a sense of investment in the future. Again, it's a th it, I'm thinking more philosophically now about artwork and that it has a longevity to it. Um, yes. Like I see a lot of the Mona stuff and it's just, it's so timely that it'll never be timeless. It's so shocking against the now that it will never have relevance or beauty in the future. People, I think, will look back at a lot of it. Like, for instance, and I even, I'm even loath to mention this, but they're infamous for having a wall of vaginas on the, on, 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 in their main gallery. Yeah. And I'm thinking in 50 years' time, are people going to look at that and say, that's beautiful? Well, I know why he's doing it. Right. Because it creates conversation and that brings people. Right. Ooh, we're really, let, we better have a look, you know. Yeah, right. So it's just publicity really. Yeah. But it's not good, so. Yeah. Yeah. So you're also an art critic and judge. Yeah, um, you've. Yep. What do you look for in other paintings that, is it is it purely subjective or are there things that um, as a judge you're looking for in other artists I think I like to see the effort. Right. I don't like just seeing paint splashed on, he's done it in 10 minutes and it's five grand, you know. Like, yeah. That annoys me. Or as I labour over mine, like yeah. it takes me a few weeks sort of thing. Mm. So, yeah, I like to see. Unless unless they just nailed it, it was like Picasso, he draws a dove like that and it's like, wow, mm. <laughs> incredible. Mm. But, um, yeah, I look for effort and time and um, – I like it to be something too. I'm not really big on just – I don't mind abstract, like I say, colour and mm. shape, but I much prefer realistic scenes. That's just my – that's because that's what and, I do. I'm going to put you on the spot here, ask you something I haven't prepared, prepped you for. Who do you think are the leading artists that inspire you or you admire today? Well, I love the early uh, pioneers, Arthur Streeton, McCubbin, Roberts. They're my gurus. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But they work plain air, which I've done before, but I find it problematic working outside mm. with wind and flies and and just to catch that light, it's only like that for 15, 20 minutes. So mm. you have to be an impressionist. You've got to put it down really quick, mm. whereas I'm more photorealistic, so I need time. Mm. So, yeah, but I love the early Heidelberg School Australian mm -hmm. artists. Okay. If we step back a little bit and we talk about Christianity and art, it seems that today... Um, Christians are really reluctant to, particularly Protestant Christians, if I can put it that way. Uh, maybe it's because of reluctance to display image, right? But why would you agree that Christianity and the arts today has an uneasy relationship? Oh, not necessarily. Do you think it's supported? Not not if it's um, encouraging or, like I say, it's a creative piece or mm. a landscape or something, but if it's shock value... Yeah, I'd say it puts people off. Yeah, Christians puts them off. If, mm. You know, like vulgarity art, you know, who needs that? Mm. <laughs> I don't understand that. Mm. Like I said, it's, it's to get people in. I want to shock them. Have you seen that? It's disgusting. Mm. It's a bit like a car accident, you know. We shouldn't yeah. look but we all want to have a look, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, that's how they work. Yeah. 
Um, I'm just thinking about that. Um, is do you think as churches where we are generally as artists, some some artists I know feel like they're misunderstood or they're not supported. How do you feel as a Christian with your own local church community? Do you do you feel supported? Uh, and, I do. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I do. But some of that's just being an artist in general. We tend to be very insular, very um, mm. uh, not outgoing, you know, mm. because we do work on our own a lot. Mm. I'm fortunate because I've got a gallery and I love that balance where as soon as the buzzer goes, I'm off the, out of the studio into the gallery and I'm meeting people and talking to them and getting encouraged by what they like. So mm. I'm fortunate I've got both sides of the, the coin. Yeah, see, that intrigues me because I, I would often th- think of art as being a very individualistic pursuit. But for you, it seems like just as much the, in, the, the engagement with people that are buying the art is just as important. It is, yeah. Mm. And also the feedback's important. Mm. Is it, you know, I might think it's all right. Do other people, you know, do they like it? So when you've got a gallery, you get first-hand criticism mm. and no one ever doesn't like it. Even if they don't like it, they won't say that. Mm. So it's only ever encouraging, you know. So, But when you say criticism, have there been things that people have said that you've gone, oh, yeah, that's a good point. I need to think a, about that. A bad point? Yeah. I've only ever had one. Right. From a commission I did for a guy in Queensland. Right. And I did Antarctica. He was a scientist who went down there and he gave me three or four photos. He said, can you put all those together and do me a big oil about that size? Mm. And I thought, you know, challenge, okay. Mm. So I did it. Everybody I knew loved it. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Mm. Reflection in the water. When he got it, he rang up and he abused me. Is this the best you can do? This is terrible. Call yourself an artist. Whoa. So I was just shattered. I'm like, what? Couldn't believe it. He'd, he'd paid me, obviously, because mm. I sent it, I get paid, then I send them off. Mm. It took me ages to get over that. But my wife said, Look, you, get, you know, you've had a hundred commissions. He's the only guy who's ever said anything. He's the sort of guy, if I had a pain to Mona Lisa, he'd say, Why'd you put a half a smile on her face? Mm. You know, he's never going to be pleased. So yeah. that's the only way. That'd be incredibly discouraging, yeah. too. I couldn't understand it, but mm. I found out later that that's the sort of guy he is with everybody. Okay. So it's just, it was him, not me, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. But it's important to know too that there's a real person behind the paintbrush. Yeah. That's trying to do what's right by the customer. Yeah. Mm. And, it, you know, you could say you're disappointed or something, but to really let me have it, I thought that was really rude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you could go back in time, you're in a time capsule, you go back 30, 40 years, and you could talk to a young Richard Stanley about the things you've learnt over your life and your art, what would you say? I'd say uh, work harder, do more. Yeah. Um, every, it's a bit like I tell people if you want to play a piano, play the piano. Because I say, oh, I must do a course and, I, you know, I'll go to art school. I said, no, paint. If you want to paint, paint. That's how you get better. So my, that's what I'd say to my younger self, mm. do more painting, yeah. Do you think you procrastinated a- and like? Were- no, because I was young, I was raising a family, you can't just sell paintings every day, so I had mm. to have other jobs as well and, mm. yeah, so, but it was always in the background that I wanted, wanted to uh, make a living from it. So I, had, I made lead light windows for 10 years, stained glass windows. Mm. I built, made jewellery out of the gallery down there. Mm. So that sustained us for a long time, yeah. Okay, so maybe if I wrap this up and ask you this question, what would you say to young aspiring artists, uh, especially, well, not necessarily if they're Christian, but uh, especially if they were, what sort of advice would you give? Hang in there, persist. Mm. Like I say, work hard. You know, don't talk the talk. What is it? Don't walk the walk. No, don't talk (laughs) the talk, walk the walk. Yeah. Do it. Don't tell me, show me. Mm. That's one of my big things. Don't tell me, show me, you know. Mm. So that's what I'd say to young artists. If, you, if your heart's in it and you're passionate about it, you'll do bad ones, you know, you'll be disappointed, but every now and then you'll do a good one and that, that will lead you to the next good one. Mm. It's, a long, it's a long apprenticeship, I tell you. <laughs> but how do you know? Because it feels to me like there's a real risk with art. Like, like I'm good at art at school, but oh, I say to my mum and dad, I want to be an artist. They go, oh, we, well, hey, how's that going to put food on the table? Yeah, but they all, 
I relate back to the early artists who were all, you know, living in rags and they couldn't sell their work. Mm. Now there's millionaire artists all over the world, you know, like mm. art's really popular. Mm. And I've really noticed the growth since I've been here, like how much. Tasmania's known for its art. Mona's really helped because it's bringing them here. Mm. And then we get the crumbs off the Mona table, you know, so. So yeah. not, j- but I would think it's more than just Mona, isn't it? No, but I mean as, a, as an icon yeah. like Port Arthur. Oh, we've got to do Port Arthur, we've got to do Mona. Yeah. And they might think, oh, I don't like their art much, but they're already here. What other art is there? So mm. they'll come down and see mine, you know. Yeah. Are there, are, I mean, apart from Mona, are there other places that display? Lots Salamanca. Of- right. I was in there for five years at Gallery Salamanca and Aspect right. Design. Right. And they've moved to Melbourne now. So, mm. yeah. So I'm represented in Victoria where I'm having this show in okay. Queenscliff, if anyone knows, near Geelong. Okay. Yeah, starting on the 1st of September. You can give a free plug. The first free of plug, 1st of September, uh, Sea View Gallery. Right, in Victoria. Queenscliff, yep. Okay. Uh, starting, yeah, first day of spring. And you'll be there, you can get to, they can get to meet you and. No, she doesn't, oh. she doesn't do openings. Oh. Yeah, so. Okay. It'll, but the good thing about her, all the work stays there. It's not like mm. three weeks and you're out sort of thing. Mm. She keeps my work on the wall because I've been with her for a few years. Okay. And um, I usually send one every time I've finished one, mm. like a spare sort of thing. But if people were visiting Tassie and they were in Hobart, it's like, what is it, 30, 40 minutes down to Signet? 45. 45? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, they're welcome to come in. They sure are. I've got a painting studio at the back mm-hmm. and a buzzer on the gallery at the front door. So as you come in, it'll go bing dong and then give me about 30 seconds and I'll be in there because <laughs> I'm at the easel so I can't just sit in the gallery waiting for people to arrive. So. Yeah. But, yeah, come down. I'd love to see you. Ten, yeah. ten till five yep. every day but Saturday. Yeah, okay. Sad day I get out in the garden. <laughs> Got to get out of there for a while, you know? <laughs> yeah, great. Oh, well, thank you so much. It's been um, inspiring looking at your work but also really inspiring to hear about your life and and uh, and what God has done in and through you. Yeah, I just want to uh, give thanks to my wife too. Mm. She uh, That's another reason I became an artist as well because she's not well. She had an aneurysm with our fourth child. Wow. She was seven months pregnant. Yeah. We thought we were going to lose both of them. Yeah. And um, they had to give a brain surgery while he was in there. Mm-hmm. So he monitored his heartbeat and he, if he got stressed, they're going to have to take him out, but he didn't. They pulled through. She had the brain surgery. I had a cesarean, but she's, they, they said there's three things. She'll either die, she'll be in a wheelchair, or she'll have headaches for life, and she got the third one. So basically I'm her carer, so wow. I have to work from home. So this is why the painting, I really got into it big time. So it's a real provision. Yeah. You know, the place at Signet, um, and, uh, which is your studio, your work, your home, which means, but it means you can also care for her. Exactly. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And um, she's my number one fan, of course, yeah. other than you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Just on that, because I know wives are an incredible blessing and encouragement to us. How has your wife encouraged you in this way? Oh, like she was helping me select the work to bring today and mm. she said, you know, make sure you pray before you go in and mm. call on the Holy Spirit. Like she's a very spiritual lady. so, mm. And that's what got her through all it because she lives in pain and you wouldn't know it. She doesn't tell you. Yeah. But I can see it, you know. Yeah. So, um, Yes, in that way, she. I thought, wow, you're so strong. I need to be too, you know. Mm. Yeah. So she encourages me like that. Yeah. And she loves my art. And she's, she'll be critical. That, Shouldn't do that tree. Looks terrible, you know. Don't do that. I don't like that one. And then sure enough, someone else buys it. And I said, well, what are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you ever have to say, though, you, oh, you were right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, I value what she says. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yes, we all do. <laughs> we have to, don't we? <laughs> I know. I'm just thinking of my own life and the positive impact my wife has. Um, thank you, honey. Uh, well, it, it's been great having you. And uh, if you're ever in Tasmania and especially around Hobart, call into Signet. Stanley's Art is on the main street in Signet. Um, in the Huon Valley. Yep, in the Huon Valley. Richard's there Monday to Friday, 10 to 5. Um, very easy to talk to, as you've seen today, and his art is beautiful. Well, this has been Mark Powell for AP's Profiles in Christian Living. I hope you found this episode encouraging as much as I have, and I look forward to seeing you next time.